We also spoke to Vion's correspondent Patrick Folk for more insights on the story. Patrick joined us from Beijing. Listen in. The decision to revise the total number of deaths comes after authorities said that medics had been overwhelmed and there'd been a lack of testing capacity, particularly at the beginning of the outbreak. And you have to remember that this is where the outbreak began. So in many ways, China was dealing with the unknown. And authorities might argue that this, in fact, is an example of China being open and transparent about uh, some inaccuracies and have tried to correct that. And the figures are substantial. 1,300 might not sound like a, an awful lot in the ground scheme of things when you look at the total number of deaths in countries like the US and Italy. But if you put it in China's context, it raises the national total by about 40 percent and raises the total for Hubei as well by 50 percent. And of course, a lot of China's critics are going to be saying, well, what other data that's coming out of the country is inaccurate. The other headline story today, of course, was uh, China releasing Q1 GDP figures. It shrank by 6.8 percent, the first time uh, that uh, the economy has uh, shrank uh, since GDP records, uh, quarterly GDP records began in 1992. Uh, and it spells out just what challenge lies ahead for authorities to revive the economy. There was some uh, mixed uh, data otherwise as well. Uh, industrial output was uh, down 1.1 percent, which was actually better than expected. Uh, but of course, there are concerns about demand moving forward as the rest of the world grapples with the coronavirus. And also retail sales were uh, softer than a lot of people had expected. And that's an indication that consumer demand uh, may continue to be, be weak in the weeks and months to come.